Good evening and welcome to Eastfeld Crime Watch and Reporting Show. I'm your host, Don Pettinger. We are honored to have you with us again tonight. And let's see here. We already have a few viewers tuning in, which is great. We have a packed show tonight of a lot of great information. Tonight, my guest is going to be Mike Gayton. Uh, many of you are very familiar with Mike. He's one of the administrators on the crime page and does a lot of correspondence with many of you. Uh, I'd just like to remind you again, uh, G. Goot is one of our administrators, uh, David Ruggio and Eric Martin. Um, but tonight we have uh, Mike Gayton on, and Mike and I are going to be discussing a, a boatload of things. Hey, last week we had Deputy Deanna Myers on, and she talked about volunteering opportunities at the Sheriff's Department and how your high school student could potentially become an Explorer Scout, which is a great segue into a career in law enforcement. That was an amazing show, and we've had over 1,700 people watch that show so far, and we've received quite a few comments, not only about volunteering, but people who were interested in possibly getting a job with RSO not only as a deputy, but also as a dispatcher and other things. So very successful show. Uh, that show is still available if you'd like to look at it. Just want to let you know that the shows are live here on our group page. That means you have to be a member to watch it. Once the show is completed, then we move it over to our page, which is a general page that anyone can see. And at that same time, we also put it on our YouTube channel. And that way people are able to view it on YouTube or on the page or within the group still. And it gives three different opportunities for people to see the show. So we believe a lot of these shows are extremely important and to get them out to you. You know, we'd like to ask you tonight as you're watching the show, if you see something you like, click that like button. Let us know that you're participating with us. And also at the very top of the link, you'll see, hey, I'm broadcasting with Ecamm Live. If you click that, what that does is allows me the opportunity to um, see. Hey, can you guys let me know? Someone said they don't hear my audio right now. Uh, are you able to hear my audio? Give me a thumbs up right now. Um, Don, okay, somebody said they can see it so or hear it. So maybe it was just your broadcasting. But thank you very much. But yeah, you should be able to hear my audio perfectly. But uh, if you give us a thumbs up, it lets us know that you're participating. Also, that little link at the top that says Ecamm Live, if you click that, that lets us know who we're talking to, and it brings your post up, and it allows me to bring it up on the screen. And I know tonight that you're going to have a ton of questions for Mike, who's standing by, and uh, uh, we're, we're very excited to be able to uh, answer those questions. Coming up here over the next five or six weeks, we have a number of great guests in store for you. Uh, a lot of these are guests that you have asked for, and we're just in the final phases of... Uh, uh, securing them and getting their date set. Just want to remind you right now, there will not be a show next Thursday as it will be Thanksgiving. And like many of you, I will probably be in a turkey coma and not be able to uh, do you any good. So I want to bring on a, a good friend of mine, Mike Gayton. We've known each other for almost 15 years now. Uh, we met each other when we bought our homes uh, over in the heartland. And uh, we live on the same block, so uh, without any further ado, I'm going to bring Mike on, and he will be joining me here in just one second. So, Mike, how you doing? Hi, Don. Good evening. Good evening. It is great to finally get you on the show, uh, so you're able to see some of the members of our uh, our group. So, we have a, a lot to talk about tonight. Let Let's start off with the the Eastfeld Crime Watch and Reporting Page group. Tell them a little bit about why we have membership questions. Part of it is, is we want to keep some integrity in the group. We, don't, we want to make sure that uh, it's mainly East Vale residents and the surrounding areas. We understand that there's times where people may live in other cities and work in East Vale or live in other cities and have family here that they come see and care for and they want to know what's going on. And, you know, well, there's a lot of times we make exceptions for that. So, uh, we want to make sure that we're able to look at their Facebook walls to make sure there's no um, nefarious behavior, no gang ties, no um, stuff that would be against the mission of the crime page. Um, there's times where we may have a whole lot of high schoolers join the page all of a sudden when there's issues with a paintball or speed racing or donuts being made. And... We understand the word gets around and they're 
in their uh, area too. So, you know, our way is it's trying to protect the members of the page. There's 9,400 members almost, I think maybe more now. And um, so we want to make sure that it's just not open to everybody, that there's a, a reason to be in here. And so that, we, and we do decline people, right? I, I, we actually decline more than we accept. Absolutely. So you need to know that, East Feld, that we decline more people than we accept. I was looking today, and in the last 28 days, we've declined 168 and only approved 147. So uh, that's that's something. Uh, so, Mike, um, is there ways you can get blocked from the page? It takes a, lot, a little bit to get blocked. <clears throat> if we know that you're a spam account and you're um, – you know, it's obvious that you're not from this country and you don't have any mutual friends. You don't have anything in Southern California on your on your Facebook wall. Uh, you, you probably aren't even going to be you're not going to be accepted You're gonna, and you're going to be blocked. Um, another one would be if you're doing stuff that's detrimental to the page and its members, if you're constantly bashing, if you're threatening constant profanities, it's just stuff that's that, you know, we don't necessarily have time to play kindergarten cops and and it's just easier to to cater to the productive people that want to actually be uh part of the group and and learn from the group as opposed to constantly just trying to play home monitor absolutely um let's hear we lost your for a second there but um an, another important thing is as far as the administrators we talk to each other constantly about what's going on in the page it's not just one of us isn't that correct Absolutely. We're on a, a, a group chat uh, most every day, and it's talking about um, what do you think of this person that's uh, – do you know this person that's uh, that's trying to join the page? I, I don't know them. It looks like you have mutual friends with them. Um, what, you know, what do you think? Do you know where they live? Is this where they really live? It, or we may say, hey, this is the third – um, neighborhood watch that this person tried to join and they're giving different streets all the time. So that's an, another thing that we will confirm with each other about. Some people don't know what neighborhood watch are supposed to be in. And some people are trying to get in a whole bunch of them because they just want to know what's going on. Absolutely. So we stuff off each other. Absolutely. So uh, another thing that we might kind of like to talk about is how the crime page ties into the neighborhood watch pages. You want to share a little bit about that, the, art, the thing that we were talking about, the funnel? Well, the way I see is the crime page is the umbrella that basically covers over all 29 groups uh, of the neighborhood watch. And I'm proud that you and uh, – Todd Rigby and Brandon Plott worked so hard for a year to get this thing started. It took a lot of hours. And from what the Harupa Station RSO has said in their meetings, that this is the only one of its kind in the nation where every uh, development in the city is covered by a um, organized neighborhood watch with block captains in place, a dedicated page on social media, and it's overseen by admins as well as moderators and is overseen also by the main crime page. So there's, communication is the key, and that's what makes it work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, we have the main page, which information gets to. Then if it's something neighborhood particular, we put it down to the neighborhood page. And uh, in our neighborhood, we even take it one step further. You want to talk a little about that? I call it being the layers of peeling away the layers of the onion. We have you and I are part of the main crime page, and then we have a the heartland, which is the neighborhood watch page, and then on our street we have a page. That's the name of our street, which is all 15. Well, it's actually about 13 out of the 15 homes are on Facebook on this page, and then then we're also part of a chat on the private messaging. So what that allows us to do is. Uh, and communicate with all day long and people say well, i couldn't take that well actually you know what it's it's kind of easy if you don't want to get keep getting messages you just turn it off for a while but you know it's it goes to hey i just got a ups package delivered is anybody around able to just pick it up real quick i don't want to sit out on my porch and, and get a, you know a porch pirate coming by and taking it or you know hey I, my kid left the sprinklers on or Who's who's sitting in that truck at the, the cul-de-sac? We don't know that truck. Does anybody know that truck? 
Or who's the guy in the blue polo shirt that's going door to door? Is he selling something? Is he what's he doing? So it's all day long. It's just you know we're, we know exactly what's going on in our street, and you know that combined with the cameras, there's about probably about half the people on our street have cameras, and it really uh, lends towards a safe street. You can see it during Christmas. You can see it during Halloween. We had almost 400 trick or treaters, and a lot of the parents that I overheard looking at each other while their kids are in line getting food, um, candy. They're saying, Hey, this is one of the coolest streets in, in the city every year. Right. So that's why it was back. So the, the four, people, it really, we have, right? Mike's right. It really does work when you have that net. And some of you may call it like we do in the neighborhood watch meetings, the Gladys Kravis approach when we're not nosy neighbors we're just really watching out for each other so if there's a car that's not known uh we say something to each other hey whose car is this hey that was my friend they're just coming over because we're so diligent now you can't i hate to say this but you, you can't get butt hurt if someone says hey this car looks suspicious oh well that's my crazy brother I'm just glad that my neighbors are looking out for me and we've all had someone visiting us that the other neighbors have said, Hey, who's this person? And it really provides a layer of safety for all of us. So Mike, those are really good c components to make sure that your neighborhood's safe, but let's start talking about some of the things that come on the page all the time that would fall possibly under the broken window theory and why we tell people to post everything on the page. Well, you know, to start off with the, the concept of broken windows is when something small goes wrong, a broken window, a deserted house, squatters, an abandoned truck, uh, illegal dumping, trash dive, dumpster divers, when the, or graffiti, when the little things are addressed right away, uh, well, actually, when they are not addressed, people in the community tend to then now take on more of a, a, a negative aspect towards it. However, on the flip side, the corollary to that is when these little things are addressed and tackled right away, then the attitude of people becomes even more positive and it, it becomes even more of a, uh, a, a safer place for everybody. Absolutely. So, when we tell everybody that they really need to be reporting suspicious activity I know sometimes we call them the OP, the original poster on the page, sometimes gets attacked like, hey, it's two in the morning, I'm on my way home from work, and I saw this kid skateboarding down the street with a backpack, he had a hoodie on, and everybody goes, well, why is that suspicious? Why did you call it in, or why did you look at it? Mike, can you articulate a little bit how that is really helpful for the deputy that's on patrol at night? The deputy has a lot of tools at his disposal legally. And it just takes a little bit of thinking outside the box. This has nothing to do with racial profiling. This has nothing to do with the illegal stops, violating somebody's uh, Fourth Amendment rights of search and seizure. This has everything to do with something called reasonable suspicion, which the definition of that is facts that you can articulate to see whether somebody has been involved in a crime, is involved in a crime, or is about to be involved in a crime. Now, let's say we see a kid on a skateboard at 2 a.m., which I've seen it 100 times in the 15 years I've lived here because I walk my dog between 1 and 2 a.m. all the way down Scholar from Limonite to Citrus and back, and I see it all the time. Now, is a kid breaking the law? Well, if he's over 18, not necessarily. If he's under 18, yeah, he's breaking the curfew. But let's put everything together in its totality. We have crime reports on file of people on camera breaking into cars at 2 a.m. with backpacks, sometimes with skateboards, with most of the time dark clothing or hoodies on, and then they do their deed and they just stroll down the street. They need to be stopped. They need to be stopped, identified. If they're, they're not doing anything wrong, if they're coming back from band practice or a study hall, a study group at their friend's house, okay, great. Nothing's wrong. Go on your way. Have a great one. However, that's normally not the case at two or three in the morning. And a lot of times they have contraband on them, which is spray paint cans, um, narcotics, marijuana, paraphernalia like pipes. Um, they'll have things that will they can break into cars like pry bars, little porcelain chips from the 
the spark plugs that are used to break glass. They may have blunt objects to smash windows. We've seen two uh, burglaries recently that were the same modus operandi where they break the rear slider and enter. Um, then, and then, you know, stolen goods from people's cars. If a guy has five sets of sunglasses and three iPads in his backpack and he can't say where he got it from and he can't unlock them, probably should be arrested for receiving stolen property at that point. And then we need to find the owners of it. So, you know, the deputies have all of this legal, legal rights at their disposal to stop and talk to people. And you know what? I've had deputies talk to me as I'm walking my dog and I like it. Stop and talk to me. At least it, it shows me that you're, you're looking around. You know, obviously there's just a couple at night and they're working real hard during graveyards, answering radio calls, going place to place. But, you know, in the meantime, when you've got some downtime, they drive through parks. People shouldn't be parking in parks, and a lot of times they do. Some people are sleeping there. Some people are doing whatever they're doing. But Absolutely. either way, it's not. So, you know, the other thing that we touch on, and you were talking about how original posters get bashed sometimes, we try to obviously protect people's interest in posting because we want them to share with us. But a lot of times when you notice when they get bashed, it's, don't we have other things, that, more serious stuff to think about? Here's the bottom line. If there's a law against it, let's enforce If there's a city in, uh, ordinance against it, let's enforce, uh, enforce it. That's part of the mission of our pages. We are here to assist law enforcement to keep the public safe and to keep the, the, the people's perception of fear down as well. Absolutely. You know, and, and we know we've gotten a lot of feedback from you that uh, individuals, when you've called 911 because it's an emergency or you've called the non-emergency line to report suspicious attitude, you've taken and posted what you feel is attitude from the, the 911 dispatcher or the dispatcher in general. Now, the dispatcher is supposed to collect as much information as they can to provide for the deputy so they can do everything legally out in the field. So if they end up making an arrest, it's a good arrest. Don't feel bad if the dispatcher is asking you a lot of extra questions. Now, we do know in a few occasions we've seen where dispatchers are questioning why you're calling. At the end of the day, if you feel something suspicious, say, I just feel it is, it doesn't look right, and I want to see a deputy come out. And you can force the issue, um, and that will allow a deputy to be uh, call, uh, radio called to come out to that area. So we, we encourage you to call. You're not inconveniencing them. That is exactly what we pay our law enforcement for. And we want them to be proactive. And giving them this kind of information along with the posts that you share on the page is extremely helpful for them. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Mike? Absolutely. And remember, when you're calling... 911, just like if you're posting on our page, we need to know who, what, when, why, how. Give us as much information as you can. If you notice somebody post, ah, somebody stole my truck. Keep an eye out for this truck. Okay, what color is it? What's the plate number? Where did this happen? When did this happen? Did you see anybody? Was there any other issues? The, the 911 operator is typing while you're talking to them. They're asking questions while they're typing. They're multitasking because as you're telling them and answering their questions, they are typing up a call to send out to a deputy. And so the more clear and concise you can be, uh, hi, my name is Mike. My phone number is such and such. I'm at Sumner and 65th. And I just saw two guys uh, open a car, take something out and leave, and they're walking south on Sumner. The first guy's in a gray hoodie. The second guy's in a black hoodie. And uh, I can't tell what ethnicity they are because it's dark and they're walking away from me. But they're southbound, uh, going towards 68th Street. You've just given them so much information that they can give to the deputy. That's what they're trying to look for. So if it sounds like they're trying to be difficult and you think they're giving you, you know, a zillion questions to try and prove yourself, they don't expect you to know legal terms between what's burglarizing a uh, vehicle or what's just walking down the street. They, but, they, but they do need facts because the deputy now when they're driving, the deputy may not get there for 20, 30 minutes. So now if they see two guys on Hammond or at the 7-Eleven in a, a gray hoodie and a black hoodie, this could pretty much be your burglary suspect. 
Absolutely. But if you just say, I you guys walk in Southbound, I can't remember where yet, but it doesn't give them anything to go on. So they're just trying to have clear and concise uh, facts. Facts are power for the deputies to do what they need to do to, to do their investigations. Absolutely. Now, uh, another thing that we, we want to share with everybody, and Mike alluded to this a little bit earlier, is with the broken window theory, calling in little things. And I know that some people don't agree when we see someone going through the trash or uh, if we see someone who's less fortunate, a homeless person or a panhandler. Uh, just this last week, you know, I was listening, and this is going to take a wide v- range of emotions from everyone. And I know that we could put anything down on the crime page and we're going to get a split of people who either agree or disagree uh, fundamentally uh, about different laws that are on the books. And one of those was they were talking about the amount of homeless people in Los Angeles and the amount of uh, crime that is taking place as a result of it and the landscape changing. But they were saying the minute they pull into Beverly Hills, you do not see that. There's not homeless people in the parks. There's not here. And you're immediately going to come back and say, well, that's because they're rich. or that's... No, it's because the Beverly Hills Police Department has an edict that they are going to make it as difficult as possible for people to stay within their city. That means using every tool, like Mike said, at their disposal. If they're going through trash, they're going to use the municipal code to cite them and you know, continue to do that and make it rough on them where they will go somewhere else. Uh, We just noticed recently about people camping, uh, and Mike will talk a little about that here in a second, uh, camping or lodging down by uh, the river. We need to be diligent. When you see those things, call them in. If they have a campfire going, this is fire season that we're just coming out of. You need to call that in. And the deputies, the more contacts they make, and they do proactive policing, we can start to solve some of these issues, but it's going to be meaning using every municipal code at our, uh, at our ability and at our reach for the deputies. Now, some may not like that, but in the end of the day, that's what helps make us the 12th safest city in, in, the, in the nation. What do you say, Mike? Absolutely. I think everything that's addressed quickly a lot of the residents do that. When they see graffiti, they immediately call the eCitizen uh, app, and you can type in your request. It's addressed immediately. A lot of times you'll get a response within 12 hours or released within 24 hours of either who's handling it or it's been handled. Uh, the same thing goes with uh, people scavenging in, in uh, trash cans. Call it in. Um, we'd like to see some citations being handed down because – if you just keep shooing them away, they just know, oh, I'm just going to go to the next street, and it's okay. Nobody will bother me on that street. But if they start getting cited once in a while, then it's keeping people on it. And I don't want to go into Eastvale because they cite you. We'll go over to Ontario, or we'll go over to Corona and do our stuff there. It's the yeah. same thing with kids or, or anybody loitering around the strip malls, the, right. the supermarket, begging for money. It's the same thing for coming up on – Christmas now, the parking lots, the department parking lot, the department store parking lots are going to be packed. They're going to see you go to your car. They're going to see you put boxes in. They're going to see you go to another store without even driving away. Be smart. Look around. Be aware of your surroundings. And uh, anything that doesn't look right, if you see people just doing circles in the parking lot and just approaching people in their cars and not doing anything, or they're not looking for parking spaces, probably up to no good. Doesn't mean you have to be paranoid. But it doesn't hurt to call it in. And, you know, once they see a, a sheriff driving by, they may just go to the next uh, the next door. Absolutely. You know, these are all great things about being proactive. And it's not being paranoid. It's really looking out for each other. Uh, you could say that I don't want to live that way. Unfortunately, we are. So we want to continue to to move the conversation along. And we want to let you know, too, that these videos that you post on the page do provide information for our deputies, for our school. And just this last week, there were three um, videos that have, were posted, one of a fight and one of two girls fighting another boy and then of um, some planters getting tipped over. In each of these cases, we were able to get those videos to the school resource officers and the administration of the schools were able to respond appropriately. Now, we want that information up so that you know 
what's going on. But when the school contacts us or we've contacted them, we're able to validate that information and we will share that with you immediately. And then at that point, if we feel the discussion has gone all the way through, we'll close commenting because there's no need to continue to rehash it and we'll allow it to move down in the thread. But um, that's why it's so important to post these things. Plus, you're building a database for us of videos in case you know the same person who does one crime three weeks later commits the crime again. We have video that is very helpful for the deputies. So, Mike, we're getting a, a lot of thumbs up tonight. You're, you're knocking it out of the park. We have a lot of viewers. Um, and let's see here. We have a um, – Marcella says, yes, cite them. And someone else says, you guys are awesome. So we're getting a lot of page interaction. Let's talk about the 9 o'clock routine. Before you go to bed, what should you be doing? And keep in mind, some of us have a 7 o'clock routine. Some <laughs> of us have a 10 o'clock or midnight routine. But either way, it's before you go to bed. I'll tell you what I do. I make sure all my windows are closed. There's no, there's no even on the hot nights, there's no screen, no, uh, screen windows uh, open downstairs. I make sure the side garage door is locked. It's actually easier now because I've gotten a uh, security door put on that side side garage. But something small like my kids let the dogs out in the back and they don't and they close the slider, but they don't lock it when they come back in. I can make sure the slider's locked. I make sure the side garage door to my house is locked. Some people leave that open. Some people leave the keys in their in their cars and in, in the ignition in their um, garage. Garages can be easily broken into, and you're just giving them an easier thing to drive out of there. Um, I turn on, I have lights all around my house. I have a friend who says, I ask him, why don't you turn down some lights on on your porch? Well, if I do, it makes it look like nobody's home. I said, no, just the opposite. If everything's dark, it makes it look like nobody's home. Right. And so, but you know, all you can do is lead a horse to water, but I have uh, porch lights. I have uh, sensors that are over my garages that are pretty bright that'll turn on when on movement. I have a uh, light that's always on on the side by my gar side garage door, by the back by the side gate. The gates are locked with padlocks, which is an important thing. My back uh, has uh, lights on the back porch that are at 20 watts all night long until there's motion, and then they go to 100 for a minute, and then they go back to 20. So they don't bother my back door neighbors. Yeah, but it alerts me to movement. I also have cameras that I'll look through all my cameras. I have ring doorbell cameras on the front doorbell and on the uh, rear slider. So it catches movement as well. So it, um, it's great. You, let me interrupt for just, it's great that you talk about the cameras because we do have a camera database and we want to encourage everyone. We'll put the link at it in the show notes that if you have a ring doorbell, you have a Nest camera, any type of camera that you have, if you can log that you have that camera, it cuts precious moments off when a deputy is doing an investigation to know that you have cameras and they can contact you either at your door or by phone or email to see if they can get a copy of your uh, video footage of something that may have occurred around your home. You are not giving law enforcement or Big Brother access to your cameras. It's just letting them know that you have them so it can facilitate a quicker response during an investigation. I'm sorry, Mike. I just want to make sure I got that out. And, you know, to piggyback on that, uh, you just you just said that but the biggest misconception is, you mean I'm giving them access to my, my server? No, I'm not going to do that. No, it's not that at all. When, uh, when there's a crime in the neighborhood, if somebody gets burglarized on the street and they see that you have cameras, they could either have deputies or detectives walk the neighborhood and knock on everybody's door. Hey, I see you have cameras. Do you have access to your, your cameras? Are you able to send me a thumb drive of it or you know, email me any video? It takes a lot of time. But if they know on, a, on this 15 uh, house cul-de-sac that there's eight places with cameras, and they can go back to a database and they have all of our info. They can call up, hey, Mr. Pettinger, I see that you're on the database. You have uh, a ring flood camera as well as uh, surveillance cameras. Do you, can you happen to check yesterday at 8 p.m.? And, and if you have anything on there with a, a white Lexus going by, do you mind emailing me that? And the, and the deputy will give the email address. It's so much more efficient. You know, we Absolutely. talk about trying to make it as easy for our, our um, deputies and detectives as possible. And it just makes things a lot easier when they can call you directly 
or email you directly. It's not a hassle at all. They're not trying to tap into anything. Um, they can't look through your videos. Uh, and it's just uh, something where the, as far as long as this, once this database keeps growing and the deputies know that they can use it for everything, not just major you know, homicides and takeover robberies and whatnot, it's going to take off and people are going to have faith in it. And that's what we need. Then the other thing, uh, Don, real quick is we have um, somebody at the end of our street that we're good friends with who has an LPR, a license plate reader. I can't tell you how important an LPR is. In fact, I'm going to be getting one installed on our house. So, you know, it can track cars that are coming down the street. Um, but you know, we say it's helped. Look, this person has helped us a hundred times in the past two years. Yeah. I will I will tag him or PM him. Hey, can you look between three and three fifteen for a green Toyota or a Honda? Can you get me the plate? Boom, gets the plate and we forward it to the deputies. I mean, that's that's the difference between having no leads and having everything. Right. So, I mean, that, we really appreciate him, but we want to get more people with LPRs. Absolutely. And we, we are researching. We put a uh, piece out about LPRs recently that neighbors are buying and things like that. We're looking at potentially having a rep from that company come out and talk at a captain's meeting, and then we would have them on as an interview also. Uh, I put up a, a thing there. I don't know if you can see it, Mike, but Tina Marie asked, hey, Mike, can you PM me the backyard lights, the 20-watt to the 100-watt on motion? We need some of those and the motion lights on the garage. So that was a question from Tina Marie. So if you can PM her, that would be wonderful. And then Tina is all over it tonight. She asked also, is uh, this individual street thing something that's going to happen in Neighborhood Watch 2.0? It's a component of it. It's not the main component of Neighborhood Watch 2.0, but it's something that we're going to be introducing to the captains in January. Neighbor two, wa neighborhood Watch 2.0 is just going to blow your minds. Uh, we've started talking with uh, executives within the Sheriff's Department and other law enforcement. They know of absolutely no other city that has anything like neighbor. They don't know of anybody that has neighborhood watch that we have, but this neighborhood watch 2.0 is going to take it to a whole nother nerd level. Uh, that is really going to be great. So Tina Marie, uh, that's going to be go out there uh, at the next captain's meeting. We will talk about that. You know, we're, we're coming to the end of our time and, and Mike has provided a lot of terrific information. We're 32 minutes in. If you have any final questions, that you would like to ask Mike, if you can put those in so we can start winding up. Um, another per person put, LPR is very interesting. Yes, it is. And uh, even some of your individual cameras, huh, Mike, can be a little bit better focused so that you have a better opportunity if you dedicate one of your cameras to that. Is that right? Absolutely. They can, and they have really high resolution cameras out there. Uh, and we have a surveillance camera thread that if you, anybody wants to do a word search on it, Aaron Smith is our resident guru for the city. Uh, and there's several other people as well that know a lot of knowledge on cameras. Uh, and they know some of the better cameras out there and, and the, the sites to get them at. Um, so we don't waste our time getting low end stuff. Buy once, buy once, right? Let's let's you know put a little bit of investment into what we said are going to keep uh, us safe. And then the other thing I wanted to add is, often do we see somebody get their car broken into, or their car stolen, or a prowler on their side yard, and the next thing they say is, "Well, we're getting the cameras." Why do we wait till after that happens? Let's just get them. Right. The, the planet. We everybody knows somebody good that installs cameras. If you don't ask us, then we'll let you know. We we have recommendations all the time, and yeah, uh, we'll do anything to help anyone. You don't wait until you get an accident before you buy car insurance. So let's let's get cameras, but don't let's just get cameras that you're seeing grainy figures walk up your driveway, go in your car, and leave, and it doesn't help you at all. Spend some money on some good cameras. It's not going to break the bank. It's far better to have fewer great cameras than a multitude of crappy cameras. Wouldn't you say that's a Absolutely. fair statement? Absolutely. So. And then uh, the thing I wanted to add is get to know your neighbors. You are not being a nosy neighbor by just seeing what's going on, being friendly. There, I know people, we have some on our street, but that <laughs> don't, don't want to interact. They, they have their own family. They, you can't make them interact. And we don't want to do that. We don't want you to be, be uncomfortable. But when you have a whole street like that, Man, that street is ripe for the picking for yeah. people walking down, and nobody's going to notice them because nobody looks. Yeah. 
And another great point about the lights that Mike brought up earlier, you know, if the police are chasing a suspect, it sure does make it a lot easier for the deputy to be able to spot someone in a well-lit backyard. And, and you know, we, we make fun of saying that we'll send them somewhere else, but if your whole backyard is lit up like Dodger Stadium, that person's not going to go into your backyard. They'll go down the street or somebody else's backyard. We want our whole neighborhood to be efficient. And with the price of uh, fluorescent light bulbs or LED light bulbs, it costs pennies on the dollars to run those all night long. And if you have the motion detector ones and the ones on gauges that are hooked up to your ring doorbell or to your Alexa, you can get all kinds of things done. You agree with that, Mike? I do agree with it. And please, whenever you hear the uh, airship flying around in circles, even if you can't hear what they're saying, you want to go outside here, don't go outside. They're over your your neighborhood for a reason. They're looking for somebody that has secreted themselves somewhere. Don't go outside. Don't go out on your front porch and watch. This isn't a fireworks show. They're trying to track and catch somebody. And they're trying to tell the deputies where to go to make a perimeter. Just stay inside. Right but now, don't be scared. We right. don't want anybody to be scared either. Right. We don't want anybody to be scared when the the two uh, people, uh, three people, got robbed for their cell phones at gunpoint. That shouldn't put the whole city in paralysis. That's right. that's not. These are these are freak incidents. They were targeted uh, because of certain in- situations. And uh, yes, I wouldn't send my 14 year old out in the same neighborhood, a street from where it happened to walk the dog. But you know what? I wouldn't have a problem walking around. Right. But just be smart, but don't be scared. And we want to remind everybody, too, that the airships also help find lost people. So to follow Mike's thing, if you live in a two-story house, secure your bottom, go upstairs, open a window, and hear what they're saying. If they're saying they're looking for a lost person and you can get the best description possible, then that's great to share. But don't share wild crazy things unless you can confirm it Uh, on this last missing person uh we had a a person on another site that was posting that uh someone had escaped from the prison and that just can create uh havoc you know within the community unnecessary fear and out everything out there but you know we're at the 37 minute mark mike and you've done wonderful and we still have like three more uh, questions that probably could take us 37 more minutes. I'm getting comments here. Hey, great segment. Yes, Aaron Smith is the guru. Um, and that's what I was told years ago about choppers. Turn on all your lights outdoors for the police so they can see if you hear the choppers over, the more help we can give them. Mike, I want to bring you back on again uh, You know, in, in a week or two, and we can continue to answer these questions because I think this is very valuable. What do you think about that? Well, I'm about to renegotiate my contract with you, firstly. Um, Right. However, (laughs) I'd love to. This is fun. Um, This page is not about the admins. This page is about the residents. And this is the residents is what makes this page go. We are in full support of RSO, Harupa Station, all of the deputies that work our area. They do an awesome job. We are 100% behind them all. We appreciate it. We know they're understaffed compared to adjoining cities. And that's why it's going to take residents to be this arm. And this is what the term community policing is, is it's the, the partnership between law enforcement and the uh, residents of the community and the business owners in the community to work together to identify and, and combat crime. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are at the 40 minute mark and we don't want to keep you here any longer. Uh, Mike Gayton, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Uh, you did a wonderful job this evening and I will let everybody know when Mike's going to be back on again. And we might even do a round table and bring a couple of the other administrators on. Also, we can get up to six people I can have on here. Uh, so everybody can watch and ask questions and maybe just have a round table. But I definitely want to bring Mike back in. You just kind of see where this segment went. So if you have more questions for us, this is a great opportunity to ask them. If you have questions that you want from RSO answered, if you can let me know or Mike, you can PM any of the page administrators. Like Mike said earlier, we com- we talk daily. Uh, and we start talking at, I mean, I have a text this morning that Mike and I were talking at 3.05 a.m. this morning 
about the show today and things like that. So uh, we really appreciate everybody out there in Eastville. We have a wonderful city. 99.9% of the residents are amazing. And uh, we have a great city council. We have a great city management team. And we have an excellent law enforcement. And the more we support them and lift them up, the better they're going to do for us. And uh, we can't thank you enough for tuning in tonight. Uh, we just want to let you know next week is Thanksgiving. We will not be having a show next Thursday, as I said at the start. Um, we want everybody to enjoy your families. Please be safe. Uh, if you've had one too many to drink at Thanksgiving, call an Uber. Uh, come on the crime page and say, hey, I'm a little slosh. I need a ride home. Someone will figure out how to get you home safely don't make a 30-second decision ruin the rest of your life. So, Eastfell, enjoy Thanksgiving. Have a blessed time with your family, and families, and please watch what you drink uh, if you're planning on driving. We would hate to come back the following week and report on something of a tragedy because of uh, someone overestimating their abilities. So, Eastfell, thanks for being a great place to raise a family. On behalf of Mike Gayton, and myself and all of the page administrators, thank you for supporting the Eastville Crime Watch and Reporting page.